I welcome you all to the DBMCI channel. I am myself Dr. Rajesh Gubba. I am the general medicine educator and a cardiologist. So as a part of the daily discussion on the clinical ECG, so today I will be discussing the clinical ECG number 7. So before going ahead with the clinical scenario, let me just give you a small information that on 29th of January, I am coming up with the discussion of the entire ECG all the way from basics to the advanced level. And this particular discussion will be useful for the students appearing for the upcoming postgraduate entrance exams. And this also will be useful for the students who are in third and fourth MBBS students, interns and post interns, senior and junior registrars and as well as the postgraduates. And after attending this session, you will become completely thorough on the understanding the concepts behind the black lines and small boxes. And I'll be also discussing the clinical emergencies and how to diagnose the clinical emergencies based on the ECG. So do attend this session live on eGurukul app on 29th of January. For subscription of this particular course, you need to click on the link which is given in the description. Having said this, let me discuss the clinical scenario or the clinical ECG of the day. So we have a 26 year old presented with the fluttering in his chest. He is a known asthmatic and this palpitations started suddenly following the use of his salbutamol inhaler. He has the history of similar episodes in the past. This time the palpitations lasted for a longer time that is for nearly around 20 to 30 minutes what he sees. On arrival his heart rate is 190 beats per minute and his blood pressure is 125 by 75 millimeters of mercury and ECG is as follows. Which of the following would be the pharmacological agent of choice? The options are intravenous flecainide, intravenous digoxin, intravenous adenosine, intravenous levetilol, intravenous sotilol. Now the ECG if you can make out what are the abnormalities that you are able to make out. So the ECG it is suggestive of a narrow complex tachycardia right if you take the complexes they are within the 70 milliseconds which one the QRS complex the QRS complexes they are within less than 70 milliseconds and you don't have a P wave as well. So what is this suggestive of narrow complex tachycardia with no P wave this is suggestive of paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia and what will be the first line management in PSVT that is the vagal maneuvers that everyone is aware of and diagnosing this particular ECG is not at all difficult for you but the challenge is what drug you will give in this patient. Now this particular patient is a known asthmatic. Now the first important question is first line management you know it is the vagal maneuvers. Second what is the first line drug that is adenosine. Now the question is can we give adenosine to this patient? The answer is a big no. Why? Because he is a known asthmatic and adenosine one of the important adverse effect is it will cause transient bronchospasm and that is the reason why in asthmatics adenosine is not given. And the next important question is can we give beta blockers to this particular patient? Another important thing you need to know the big answer is no because beta blockers they are contraindicated in case of asthmatics and particularly yes you may get a thought in mind it is mainly non-selective beta blockers which are contraindicated whereas selective beta 1 blockers if we don't have any other option we can give but if you see this question now now the point is what are the safest alternatives in this patient the safest alternative is you can give the calcium channel blockers that is diltiazem and as well as verapamil these are the safest alternatives now we don't have verapamil in the option right adenosine we cannot give in this patient levetilol it is both alpha plus beta blocker we cannot give sotilol which is a beta blocker usually we avoid in patients with the bronchial asthma then what is the other alternative the other alternative like what we have is intravenous flecainide so the pharmacological agent of choice in this patient is flecainide so what is the take home message from this clinical question adenosine and beta blockers should not be given in patients with SVT with a past history of bronchial asthma 
and the safest alternative is calcium channel blockers and if calcium channel blockers are not there in the option then the drug that you need to give is intravenous flecainide which is an antiarrhythmic agent so this is the clinical ecg of the day thank you very much see you tomorrow again with the next important clinical ecg so let me remind you once again on 29th of january i'll be discussing the entire ecg all the way from basics to the advanced level and by attending this session you will be able to make out the clinical emergencies and which will make you to save the lives of the patient so to get subscribed please click on the link given in the description thank you very much see you tomorrow again